You fools! It's Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel. Did you watch Sweden Melody Festival in semi-final one? Good! Did you enjoy it? Yeah, me neither. Look, we all love Melody Festival and it was just off to a fairly uninspiring start overall, but nevertheless we had seven acts and let's go for them one by one and see which one I liked the best and then I would like to hear from you. So in case you don't know how this works, Melody Festivalen is the Swedish national final, basically. There are four semifinals and then a second chance round followed by the grand final. In each semi, there are seven acts performing and then the top two will then move on to the grand final chosen by the televoters and then another two songs, basically the third and fourth place, will then move on to the second chance round, so they still have a 50% shot of making it to the grand final. Not too shabby, huh? Well, let's talk about the two direct qualifiers first, starting with John Lundvig, my turn. Were you surprised when he qualified? I sure was. And this is not like um, a bad thing. I'm glad, because if I had to pick two qualifiers, he would be one of them. But it was just a kind of song I didn't see actually making it through. But it was very well executed and it has a grand ending with the fire coming down, the fire rain, and a very powerful chorus at the end. And he can definitely sing and he has a pretty good stage presence. So I think it was the whole package that really worked and that what got him the votes needed to move on to the finals. And how can you not be happy for him, even if you don't like the song? Did you see him, how he reacted? He like broke down at the end almost. I was like, oh, that gets me right here. So I'm happy for him. Um, it's a little sappy, you know, the ballad itself. I can't say I'm like wowed by it, but it is pleasant enough for me to listen to and then um, move on with my life. But he made it. The Swedish public said, you deserve another chance. Let's go to the finals. And that's all there is to it. Benjamin Ingrosso is the other candidate that moved on to the finals directly. Not a big surprise, am I right? I loved it how they had him like go second. Um, of the qualifiers making it look like, oh, maybe he won't qualify at all. I'm like, come on, we all knew that was going to happen. And here's the thing. First of all, definitely by far the most polished uh, staging and performance of the night. They did a really good job with the camera work, right? It didn't feel like he was on a big stage. It almost felt like that was a, a music video. So that was very well done. It worked well, the movements and all that stuff. It felt unique enough for it to be remembered, so very well done from that perspective. Now, I can say I'm a huge fan of the song itself. It comes down to personal taste. It felt as he was trying hard to be Justin Timberlake and then just ended up being Joey Fatone. Uh, all the NSYNC fans will get that reference. Um, but I, I guess it's just to me the voice, his voice sits in an uncomfortable level pitch that I'm always like, eh, I, can't, I can't get it. So melodically, it was all right. It was okay, but it didn't wow me. But I acknowledge what they uh, done with uh, what they did with the song. And for that alone, obviously, yay, big round of applause. Um, it was a clear qualifier said he was the favorite in the semi. He was the last one to perform. They had a break right before that. And he had obviously the biggest budget based on what we saw. So um, Benjamin makes it through and we have to wait and see how he is going to do at the end. So those two are safe. We'll get to see them again in like four or five weeks. Good for them. But there are two more songs that are still in the running. So don't give up hope just yet. Two songs moving on to the second chance round. And then they basically still have a 50% chance of actually being in the big grand final. They finished in third and fourth place uh, tonight. So, And those songs are Renida and All the Fields. First of all, how cute is she? She has so much stage presence and you can just, she's oozing personality. So for that, I really, really enjoyed her. Um, I think the staging was fun enough. I like the orange feel that they gave with the dresses and her hair and the braids and all that stuff. That worked really well. So it was pretty well executed. 
Now, um, I can say that the song All the Fields gave me all the fields. It was a fairly safe uh, produced entry. Um, I don't necessarily think it has really the hook it needs for me to really just, you know, jump out of my chair. But I do like that part where the instrumentation kind of plays in. It felt a little dancey, but it's just not quite where I wanted it to be. But a very fair second chance song. And um, I think it has a fair shot on um, uh, beating some of the other songs. We don't know them yet, but I think it has enough, you know, on its own merit to do okay. The other song that is moving on is Secret Berenson, uh, Patrick Swayze. That t song title always cracks me up. Now, we going from very orange to very yellow with her. That's what the staging color they chose, I guess. Look, the song, the first song of Melody Festival in 2018 goes completely bubblegum pop, Swedish kind of, fits right in there musically. And that's exactly where it ended up. I thought, oh, this could be the unlucky fifth place that just misses out on the second chance round. But looks like she made it after all. It wasn't really for me. The chorus can be catchy for like two seconds and then you're over it. It just always surprises me, the songs that are chosen for Melody Festival. And it's like they have a certain kind of song that they're looking for. Okay, we need the cheesy, incomplete song to be in the running. Because uh, there was very little going on outside of the chorus to me. But other than that, I thought it was just whatever. So the song that just barely missed out on the uh, top four and the second chance round is Edward Blum. Um, in case you don't remember, he is that dude who had all these fruits and stuff dancing behind him. I'm sorry, but to me, this was basically a poor man's version of Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast. There was so much weirdness going on with the song. I appreciate it for being completely different and out of our orbits. But the thing is, first of all, uh, Edward, not the best singer, right? It was really like, oh, you're a little cringeworthy there. And on top of it, he just doesn't have uh, the stage presence. It felt like he was so awkward on and his movements were like, eh, eh. <laughs> it was really strange to me, at least. Um, I enjoyed uh, the song for what it was for the three minutes, I guess. But I don't know if I want to see that again. It loses its appeal like once you've seen it once it's a one like one of those kind of songs so good for him for trying glad we had something different and it would have been nice to have a swedish song in the running right but hey it it just wasn't there i mean come on okay let's talk about the two songs that didn't even make it through the first round of voting starting with comfort drops solen live live kvar hos dig so um in case you know comfort drops People thought that she was going to be disqualified at first because apparently another demo version of her song was performed by somebody else years ago, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, uh, SVT, the Swedish broadcaster, said, no, you're good, nothing to worry about. But it didn't matter anyway because she's already out. Um, I'm slightly surprised that it didn't even make it to the second round of voting. Um, I thought this being so camp and over the top would at least gather a few points or enough points to move on. But clearly people did not click with it. Uh, it was so... I'm like, what was going on? The problem is I remember so much from the actual performance, but nothing of the melody. It's like, wait, how did it go? No clue. Um, but... Look, there was so much going on, those silly magic tricks, you know, like with, you know, uh, disappearing, then popping up in uh, somewhere in the audience. And you can't fool me. I mean, I'm sorry, but your doppelganger didn't look like anything like you. No, you didn't. Uh, she's certainly not the best vocalist anyway. I just remember her kind of eh, vocals there. Um, I did enjoy the saxophone part, like that part piece took me back like almost to the 90s kind of style so I had a soft spot for that but once I had like fireworks shooting out of the saxophone I'm like mm, sometimes less is more so it was just such a mess <laughs> but hey kudos for trying I guess and then last but not least uh 
Eurovision alumni Kiki Danielson. She was representing, was part of the Swedish uh, Eurovision crowd back in the 80s. Um, she came in with Osby, Tennessee, a, a, an American country song in Swedish. It was really odd. You know, I live in the United States, obviously, so I'm exposed to a lot of country music. So it's not like that the music to me was that foreign, what they were performing. But hearing it in Swedish, I was like, what? So it really kind of threw me off somehow. But I, I'm being told that music certainly has its certain popularity in Sweden. So it has a niche market. So if that's the case, good to have it in Melodi Festivalen as well. Kiki did not really do a good job live tonight. So that certainly didn't help. But even if she would have rocked it, it just doesn't have enough appeal to the masses to really, really, really stand out, if you ask me. And I think that, um, I think most people would agree. But I actually liked it. I think I thought it was one of the more likable songs this season, uh, this uh, tonight. I felt it was a little bit more uh, genuine than a lot of the other songs. We felt a little bit more manufactured and dis not dishonest. But, you know, just kind of there, more of a product. Well, this one felt a little bit more, really, that's who she is, and they didn't try. So I, I was drawn to it a little bit, actually, but I knew it, was going to, it wasn't going to happen. So that is what happened tonight. If you ask me who I would have put through, you're going to be shocked now. Um, I would have picked, actually, I agree with John. He should have qualified. I thought he had the best performance of the night as far as like vocals and every the whole package is concerned. I enjoyed him the most, I guess. But just because I enjoyed its genuine feel, I would have picked Kiki, the song that ended in last. Those two, I was like, yeah, I, I'm okay with them. So as said, that was my first impression of Melody Festival and semi-final one. And um, I hope I wasn't too harsh Again, I love Melodia Festivalen, I love the Swedes, I love everything about it. This just happened to be um, a slow start, I guess, and I know they're going to blow us away next week or the ne week after. It will happen. There are always some good songs that I want to root for desperately, so I'm looking forward to that. But I would like to hear from you as well. Do you think I'm being too harsh and there were actually some decent songs in the running? Uh, leave your thoughts below. Who should have qualified? Hit that silly subscribe button in the corner and follow us on uh, social media, Twitter and Facebook. I will be back soon so y'all have a good morning, good night, good whatever.